What's going on, Sartorialist? Welcome back to the Holsey Style. Today, what we're gonna be doing is reviewing Spear and McKay's Field Coat. We're gonna be breaking down all the features and discussing the fit so that you can decide for yourself whether you want to purchase Spear and McKay's Field Coat. Let's get into it. Spear and McKay brought back their Field Coats this season in spectacular fashion in a plethora of fabrics with a variety of colors and patterns. And since I spent so much of my menswear budget last fall winter season on acquiring sport coats, I decided this season I wasn't going to miss out. Although there were many filled coats that I desired, I finally settled on the green houndstooth field coat because I love green and because I love houndstooth. It's just a beautiful pattern. I pre-ordered the filled coat at $300. And because I wear a 38 regular in sport coats and suit jackets, I purchased the small, which is precisely what is recommended by their size guide. The field coat is composed of 100% wool tweed and sits at a hefty, hefty weight of 550 GSM, which means of course that it is heavyweight. The houndstooth pattern pairs two shades of green, which I would characterize as being mint and forest green. But apart from the composition and pattern, the field coat has the following features. It has a shirt style collar with a front button closure. It has two breast pockets, which are rounded with inverse pleats and flat pockets. It also has brown, genuine horn buttons, two hip pockets, which are rounded and bellowed with inverse pleats and flat pockets. And the field coat is also unlined with three interior pockets and a drawstring. The field coat fits me very well, which honestly was quite surprising. I was very anxious about the fit of this field coat, and I was actually on the brink of canceling my pre-order because I purchased one of Spears linen field coats over the summer, and the sizing was quite a bit off. I suspect this was, at least in part, because linen is more loosely woven and therefore slightly slinky, but the sleeves on my linen filled coat draped all the way down to my knuckles. So I actually had to use the sleeve buttons to pin them back. At a point in the future, I'll actually have them hemmed. But I'm happy I didn't cancel my pre-order because as they do, Spear made the proper adjustments. The sleeves on this filled coat fall exactly where I would like them to at the end of my wrist. I would say that the filled coat fits approximately the same as their sport coats and suit jackets, at least in the sleeves, chest, and shoulders, but they are slightly wider in the midsection. I would have you keep in mind though, once again, that I wear a 38 regular and almost always purchase their slim fit. So I'm used to them being more close fitting in the midsection. And for the field coats, Spear does not offer a fit option. You cannot, for example, choose between slim and contemporary. Now, all that being said, the field coat comes equipped with a drawstring. So you can manually make the field coat more fit forming simply by pulling and tying them. I have heard some men say that this makes the field coat appear more feminine, which is understandable because it gives a man more of an hourglass figure, but I tend to think of it as being more fit forming. And I am used to it because once again, I almost always wear Spears slim fit. As far as the texture and feel of the fabric is concerned. The field coat is made of wool tweed, so it is expectedly quite coarse. Also, keep in mind, once again, the field coat is entirely unlined. So if you're wearing a shirt underneath it, you don't have that layer of cloth between you and the field coat. I've worn the field coat out with a handful of outfits with long sleeve dress shirts, long sleeve shirts, and t-shirts underneath. And I would say that it's mostly comfortable. When you wear it with a dress shirt or long sleeve shirt, the itchiness of the wool is barely, if at all, noticeable. That said, if you wear it with just a t-shirt, it does feel slightly itchy, which once again is to be expected. But I would say that it's no more itchy than one of Spears Merino wool turtlenecks or cardigans. As far as the warmth of the field coat is concerned, I would say that it kept me mostly, but not completely warm. Now, this partly has to do with my own individual body temperature, whether or not it was windy, and also how many buttons I had clasped. So on those occasions that I wore it out of the house, I was typically wearing it over the top of an Oxford 
button down shirt with a white undershirt underneath. And these were days that sat between the low 50s and low 60s. I usually had just the two middle buttons clasped primarily for aesthetic reasons, because I wanted to cover up the drawstrings, which I had pulled and knotted, and I didn't want flapping about. But I noticed as soon as it started to get windy, I very, very quickly got chilly. Now, once again, this partly is because my body temperature tends to run a bit cold. So on a day like that, between the low 50s and low 60s, you add in a little bit of wind and I'm very quickly going to get chilly. That being said, I noticed when I was coming back from class that it started to get windy again and I decided to experiment and button up the field coat all the way to the top. And as you would expect, naturally, it was significantly warmer. I would also say if this is you, if you are someone who has a body temperature that runs cold, you can also just use it as a layering piece. And the fit of the field coat is such that it will allow for layering. You can wear a sweater over the top of an Oxford button down shirt and it will take away that chilliness. I would also say that if that's not you, if you tend to run a little bit more warm I, and you're kind of active, that just having a long sleeve shirt underneath it should suffice. I don't think that you're gonna have an issue getting too cold. The last issue I wanna address is a question that was brought to me by my friend Ricardo on Instagram. He was asking me whether I thought the field coat would be damaging to knitwear in the long term. Now, it goes without saying, I haven't owned the field coat long enough and I haven't worn it enough times with knitwear to really attest with any degree of accuracy whether or not it would be damaging to knitwear in the long term. All that being said, I do think that there is genuine cause for concern. And the reason is because of the construction of the field coat. It is, once again, unlined, which means that it doesn't, in certain places, have a barrier of cloth between you or your knitwear and the field coat. Further, I would say that the exposed seams or the stitching on the seams is a little bit coarse. And I could imagine over a long period of time with enough friction that that could potentially cause damage. All that being said, it doesn't appear to me to be enough of an issue that I'm not going to wear it with knitwear. I fully plan on wearing my field coat with my knitwear. So there you have it, Sartorialist. That is my review of Spear & McKay's field coat. If you decide that you wanna purchase a field coat, you can receive 20% off if it's your first order from Spear & McKay by using this referral code here. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this content, hit that like button, smash subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be informed when I drop more videos on the Holsey style. Until next time, guys.